it was an October surprise that rocked the campaign of Donald Trump. A lewd conversation over 10 years old caught on a hot mic, released just weeks before the election. Then candidate Trump apologized and dismissed it as locker room talk. TV host Billy Bush, though, was dismissed from his job. And tonight he's speaking out in an exclusive on-camera interview with ABC's Robin Roberts. Here we are seven months later, you're unemployed, Donald Trump is president of the United States. That must be a thought that has crossed your mind. Uh, I can acknowledge that the irony is, uh, is glaring. It, it, it certainly has crossed my mind. In fact, for Billy Bush, his very public fall from grace nearly consumed him. The last seven and a half months um, has been a process. She's your girl's hot in the purple. Whoa! Whoa. Yes! Whoa! Oh, yes, the Donald has scored! <laughs> it seemed to happen in an instant. Just over a month before the presidential election, this yeah, Access right. Hollywood tape recorded in 2005 came out. It showed now President Donald Trump and Bush having a lewd and graphic conversation. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the I can do anything. We live in a visual and digital age, so we get this, this video, this moment, and we react emotionally. And then you have social media and the ability to respond in real time, and a flame becomes a bonfire very, very quickly. Then I've done a lot of soul searching in the last seven months. Not right away, because when you are in trauma, you know, you, you go through a period of, there's stages to it. But I did some soul searching and I found some light and I have, do not focus on the past. I have no bitterness over it. Back in 2005, Bush was a fresh face Access Hollywood host, rubbing elbows with Hollywood's elite. He had crossed paths with reality show megastar Trump several times. He was at the time the biggest star on television, not just the network mm -hmm. with well, which we were both affiliated. We do want to seriously welcome our pal Billy Yay. Bush. Last summer, Bush made the jump to morning TV, his dream job as a co-host of The Today Show. But on October 7th, 2016, his career came to a screeching halt. I'm not ready for that quite yet. He was fired. Do you believe you should have lost your job over this? Based upon the moment, that is on that tape, I understand people's reaction. I agree, I also felt that way. And I can tell you 12 years ago, it was my first year as co-host of the show, but I was insecure. I was a pleaser. And I kind of remember wanting these celebrities to like me so that I could keep going in this job. Later, you know, in the ensuing 12 years that passed, I started a daytime show and became the solo anchor of The Night Show, eventually became one of the hosts of The Today Show. And you do that because you settle in and you grow and you're comfortable and I don't need to please so eagerly whoever's on the, on the other side. That's, that's the evolution. I would have been a wreck sitting in a chair, you know, with you 12 years ago and now I'm, you know, comfortable. One of the harshest criticisms leveled against Bush was that he egged Trump on. Back then, Trump was about to make a cameo on a soap opera and was getting advice from Ariane Zucker. Make me a soap star. How about a little hug for the Donnelly? Just got off the bus. Like a okay, hug, absolutely. <laughs> Melania said hug this for the was okay. The point, Billy, that people drew the line is when you said, Don't you want to hug the Donald? Don't you have a hug for him? After hearing him say those things, yeah. That you, is when people were like, oh, come on. It's one thing yes. to agree with him and can understand that, but can you understand how people are like, no. Listen, nobody reacted harsher and more gutturally than I did. It really, really just killed me. I say, you know, imagine a woman is watching that and she thinks, is that what happens to me when I walk out of a room or out of a meeting? I'm being sized up in some way. I understand that. He was lead on, like uh, egg on, from uh, the host to say um, dirty and bad stuff. Donald's wife, Melania, felt, as she said, you egged him on. I definitely added to the conversation by, you know, I was keeping the ball in the air. 
With Trump, it's not much of a give and take. And I remember this moment, you know, when he said what he said at the end. To me, it was more braggadocio, his word, and performance. If I had ever thought, I like to think, that there was a grown man sitting in front of me detailing his sexual assault strategy, I would have called the FBI. There were reports that you knew about the tape and you were talking about it months beforehand. I only talked about it with people who knew prior. I reported it as soon as it happened. I said you wouldn't believe the things that Trump was saying, you know, off camera. Wait a minute, you, you reported that tape way back? Yeah, sure. It was, as soon as it was done, I, when I was recounting what happened, I said, yeah, when the camera left, this is what the conversation was. And it was told me days later, um, well, that was on. That was, the, the camera was rolling. There's audio of all that. I said, oh, my gosh, wow. But I never thought about it again. But the hardest part about his ordeal, Bush says, was having to face his children. He is the father of three girls. My now 16-year-old daughter called me, and she was in tears. And she was really upset. And she said, why were you laughing at the things that he was saying on that bus? Why were you playing along with that? It wasn't funny. And there is no good answer for that. It was 12 years ago, but it was a really bad moment, and I'm, I'm sorry. You know me, and that's not the man you know. It must be one thing, Billy, for a stranger to feel that way, but for your daughter to ask you why. Yeah, she didn't want to hear any explanations, just, I'm sorry. What did your wife say to you? She knows very well the man she married and who I am. So she was supportive the whole way through. In fact, up until five minutes ago, we were on the phone before I drove up here. You're almost 34 at the time. Is that really, I mean, I understand what you're saying about um, wanting to prove yourself, but there are some people that said, you're, you're, you're old enough and you've been around enough. I mean, your last name For is sure. Bush. His uncle is former president, George H.W. Bush, George W. and Jeb, are his first cousins. You have been worldly more so than most people. For sure. I should have known better, absolutely. There's no question about that. People also say you should have stopped it. But I didn't have the strength of character at the time to do that, I wish I did. And my reacting to them will be a lot different. Bush says building that strength of character has taken time and self-reflection. Meditation, I spend time on mindfulness, I try to daily, you know, yoga, meditation. I'm trying to increase the amount of now my mind is in. Presence. Because most of the time we're spending our thoughts in past or future. Going over things that we should have done differently and in the future, you know, constantly planning things. How do you convince some people who are going to say, you just want your job back. You just want to get back on TV. How do you convey to people that this I can't. is... I don't think I can. And um, they'll, they'll, if they feel that way, then I, there's nothing I can do about it. I can tell you that I am only ready to get back to work now because there is purpose and there is clarity and there is acceptance and there is a changed person. For Nightline, I'm Robin Roberts in New York.